The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of Oshkosh Media, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Hello, this is Edward Kastner from Making It Happen. To my, to my left side here, I have Carol Mather. She's Area 2 Director for Toastmasters. So I, I just want to welcome her tonight. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. No problem. So do you want to talk a little, about, a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your family life and stuff? And Sure. Uh, I am a mediator. I've been a mediator for Winnebago uh, conflict Resolution Center, and I heard a podcast by a mediator who recommended Toastmasters. I was on my way to North Carolina because my daughter had a high-risk pregnancy and I thought they were moving. So I went early in her pregnancy and hearing this podcast, I thought, I need something to get out of the house because my daughter was a newlywed and they had an 800 square foot house and they did not need mom around all the time. Mm -hmm. So I joined a Toastmasters club called Gold Mine and it was a gold mine and I became a Toastaholic as one of my friends said. What did you learn from that first Toastmasters experience? It was wonderful. I learned that people are out there in Toastmasters especially to help you. They are so helpful. My first table topics, which is speaking spontaneously on your feet, mm -hmm. I volunteered for that and I said two sentences and sat down, but I did not have any ums or ahs because I heard that they were listening and watching out for ums and ahs. I heard that, ro that role mm -hmm. described, and so when I got up for, for table topics, I didn't remember that you were supposed to try to talk for a minute. So I had two sentences, but no ums or ahs. Because we know it's hard to um and ah when you're giving a speech, right? It's, it's hard not to um or ah sometimes. It's, yeah. It's not an easy skill to, you know. Right. And mm -hmm. when I did my icebreaker, which is the first speech you give in Toastmasters, you talk about yourself. I asked for extra time because I'm a talker. And they gave me extra time, and I almost ran out of time. But at the end, I knew that ums and ahs didn't count. But what I didn't know is that this club, they didn't ring the bell for them because gold mine had a little bell that every time you did an um or ah they would ring the bell but they wouldn't do that on your icebreaker speech hmm. so I believe I had 11 and I was horrified well what they did at the end of the meeting is if you had the most ums and ahs and filler words they would give you a little tongue depressor and they would write on it the meeting I should have brought it mm -hmm. um <laughs> um um yeah. But it's an ostic. They call it an ostic, like you go, ah. Yeah. And they would write on it. So for my icebreaker, I have that, and I, and I kept that. Months later, I got one more, but that was the only other ostic I got. And I learned to pause, and I learned about transition words when I'm in a speech. And lately, I have had a couple speeches where I have had no filler words. So you can learn to get rid of them. So what would you tell this, what would you tell this somebody that, you know, maybe has to give a speech for a presentation? Well, what, 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 what thing for advice would you give them, the, the best piece of advice you would give somebody? I would say if you plan ahead, 
you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You have transition words, and you know where you're going to go with those transitions. Like, I have three, po three parts, you know, this, A, B, C, and sum it up. Mm -hmm. In between, you're, you pause, mm -hmm. and you may speak slower because I have seen children giving poetry recitations. They know the poem perfectly, mm -hmm. but they say it too fast. You don't want to speak too quickly, and you want to speak at a volume that can be heard, and you want to have a little expression and vocal variety. I have been told, we have very helpful evaluations, but I have been told by a club that I'm a member that's a, I'm a virtual member by computer, that I am so calm and relaxing, and one person actually said that I could put her to sleep. Now that's a little bit too calm and relaxing for me, but. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. So what do you do for a job during the day? I work at Valley Christian School, just part time. I yeah. love uh, students and I've been a teacher before. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking towards retirement and my mediation is helping me. That's what I want to do in retirement. And Toastmasters is helping me. And I want to be involved in Toastmasters as I go into retirement. Toastmasters is helping other people. And I've always mm -hmm. had that in mind. I have a degree in counseling. Okay. So I like to help other people. And Toastmasters fits what I want to do very much. So now, as an area director, I have several clubs. Okay. One of them is Water City Speakers that meets at Fox Valley Technical College in Oshkosh. And what is exciting is they got their charter in March of this past year, but they are getting their app actual charter presented to them and they're going to get their club banner and at a charter party November 19th and everybody is welcome to join us it will be a time where the district director or maybe all three of the top people in our district will come and present that to the club so we're going to get our banner and then... Yes. And that way, if we need to move our rooms sometime, we'll have the banner right outside the room. Okay. How does, how does your job at, at Valley Christian and being in Toastmasters inter intertwine with each other? I think I speak better when okay. I'm in front of the class. Okay. How so? Well, I don't have as many filler words. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was aware, even though I was a teacher before, I don't think I was aware of how many filler words I had. I think I was deaf to it. When you come into P Toastmasters, you learn to listen in a different way. I came into Toastmasters listening as a mediator, and that's totally different than listening as a Toastmaster. Can you describe the, the difference? Well, listening as a mediator, you're listening for the facts, you're listening for their positions, and you're looking for a way to help them come to an agreement, their own agreement. I don't impose my will on them. So I'm the neutral party, and mm -hmm. I'm listening that way. Mm -hmm. As a Toastmaster, if you're evaluating a speech, you're looking for entirely different things. You're looking for a message, but it's a complete thought message. You're not looking for uh, something that you're going to bring, hopefully, together as an agreement. 
How has Toastmasters helped you become a a a a, a, a how has Toastmasters be helped you become a better speaker? I don't have as many filler words. I can think on my feet better, yeah. I think, than I used Quicker, to. Quicker, faster. Faster, yes. And that's helpful. In interview situations, I have a friend that she did a part in an interview, and she said it was it was Pathways, the educational program, that she had just done that interview part of it, that she thought helped her get the job. Mm -hmm. And table topics, that's partly why we do table topics. When you go into an interview, you don't know the questions beforehand necessarily. No. But you kind of got to have answers in your head for kind of pre pre prepared, or you got to be prepared to a answer any question. Yes. That could pop up. So, um, can you describe your first speech in Toastmasters and how you felt? Oh, it was my icebreaker, and I was talking about my early years in my education. And I'm one of the people that I don't mind getting up and speaking to a group of people. Now, I have never spoken to a really large group. But that doesn't bother me. That doesn't make me nervous to speak in front of people. So mm -hmm. I felt fine. And what I appreciated was the evaluation. Because mm -hmm. when you give a speech in Toastmasters, there is an evaluation. Mm -hmm. But what they do, sometimes they do the sandwich method, which is talking about something they liked that they connected with, and then maybe giving a suggestion like perhaps you might consider this or that. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, usually something else that they liked that was good, like please continue preparing as well as you did. That's an example. Because I was at a training for Special Olympics for, Glo for Global Messenger Public Speaking, and they used the hamburger method. They, they they were using that, like layers of hamburger to, to describe a speech to break it down. Oh, so I thought that was creative. I never heard of that before. So, and and how long have you been in Toastmasters? I've just been in Toastmasters two years. I joined in September. I think September first, twenty sixteen. What's been the most rewarding thing about uh, for you? For, you know. How has, it, how has it changed your life or, or made you better, personally? Well, I don't know that it's made me better, but I really enjoy it. I enjoy helping people. And right now, as an area director, my challenge is to help a club transition from, it was a corporate club, and now it's transitioning to a community club. And it was called Deer Tales. John from John Deere and they will be changing their name and we're about to have a meeting next week in Mayville or Horicon not sure where the meeting is yet but we're hoping to build up that club and have a name change and that's I like to be challenged and that's a mm -hmm. challenge for me mm -hmm. it's changing the name yeah they will decide on whatever their name is. Yes. What what has to go, what kind of process does they have to go through like for, for na a name change? Uh, the members just have to vote. What has to happen to transition is three, at least three members from the original club, have to join with other people. And I believe they have to have at least eight me members. Okay to be a club okay. and then we grow from there because I know with the water city speakers we had to get 20 just to be a charter didn't yeah yes that 20. was the original 20. charter you have to have 20. 20 that's right so and what other goals besides being an area director what, what other goals do you have for like other clubs you know 
Well, my own personal goal is becoming a distinguished Toastmaster, and that's the highest level you can achieve. Some people get two, three, or more distinguished Toastmasters. Okay. I expect I will have mine by next year. There is an award called a Triple Crown. It's three or more educational uh, programs that you have completed. Mm -hmm. One of them at least has to be in leadership, so it's not just a matter of giving a lot of speeches. Yeah. I have gotten two Triple Crowns in two years. Is that hard to do? It's a lot of work. Yeah. But I've had the opportunity. Now, not everybody has enough time with their job or whatever their situation is that they can do that. Mm -hmm. But I'm really thankful that I could do that. I'm also a member of three clubs. And my second club that I joined in North Carolina was struggling for a while. So it met weekly. And I was able to give a speech almost every week. So, not too many people are in that situation. Yeah, because Toastmasters is not just in the U.S., it's, it's, it's worldwide. Yes, Toastmasters International, yes. Yeah. It's in over a hundred countries. I went to the convention in Chicago, and they had, I think they had 110 or 111 flags paraded down where we have Toastmasters, and it was really spectacular to see the flags and many of the people carrying the flags were in their native costume. Mm -hmm. So that was very neat to see that. And and to con and what was your biggest takeaway from going to the co the national convention in Chicago? Like what did you take away from that? I guess I appreciate again how much people help one another. I met the young man who was on the big stage, the last 10 people for the World Championship of Public Speaking. Mm -hmm. I was excited just to go to that. Mm -hmm. That young man was from North Carolina mm -hmm. and because I'm still a member in North Carolina virtually, I went and said hi to my friends and he was new I asked him, when did you join? He said, I joined in October. He joined in October, the next August. He was on the stage of the top 10 speakers. I was blown away by that. But people helped him along the way. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I have to say about being a Toastmaster member. They're very friendly. You can always ask questions. They're always more than willing to help you. So. Yes, because all of us have been helped, and so it motivates you to want to help others. What kind of uh, awards have you won being in Toastmasters the last two years? I guess the uh, Triple Crowns, but I was in the old program that we just started our new program in February, so I'm finishing up the old program, and that's how I'm going to become a distinguished Toastmaster by finishing that program, but I have started in Pathways as well. To become a distinguished Toastmaster, you need to be a club officer, you need to be trained. Toastmasters is very good about training. So you can join a club and you can become an officer pretty quickly. I've heard of many people becoming an officer pretty quickly and you don't really have to worry about it because you will receive training and you will receive help. Do you want to talk more about how what it takes to become an officer? The officers usually are a year from July 1st to June 30th. Just that's the same time I'm area director. Mm -hmm. Next year there will be most likely in another area director. I could stay on another year, mm -hmm. but right now I don't think that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. For the officers, 
you can become any officer and you could stay in there for more than a year except the office of president. Okay. So some clubs, uh, someone will be president for a year and they'll go to another office and then they could be president the next year and they might move their officers that way. But that's, that's one of the requirements. And then also, besides being a club officer, you have to be a district officer, which is basically what I am. I'm working in the district. What kind of training did you have to have? To we had a full day of training, and we go to what is called DEC meetings, district executive committee meetings, we pretty much get monthly training. Mm -hmm. So we can go through the calendar year. I know what's coming up. Speech contests are coming up and they are really fun. We are going, going to have a humor speech contest and the international speech contest. The international speech contest is the inspirational speech and that is what gets to the big stage in August. Mm -hmm. Considering my, um, considering my, I'm, I don't mean to toot my own horn here, but considering my last icebreaker speech, do you think that's something I could work my way up to or maybe enter? Well, you certainly, if you have, I believe you have to have six speeches okay. to do the international speech competition. Okay. That, that's, but, a, that's a goal of mine. So, okay, mm. well, to, to do that speech competition, uh, I believe you have to do six speeches. The humor speech, I don't think there's any speech requirement. So you could certainly work for that. There's no reason that okay. you can't work for that. Okay. Now, when I got there, one of the semifinals I went to, I sat next to a gentleman who had been in the semifinals before and he was looking at this one gentleman and he goes, oh, I didn't recognize him because he shaved his head. And I'm like, okay. He said, he's been in the semifinals at least 12 times. 12 times? And he uh, got on the big stage. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So some people have professional speech coaches and all that but you don't necessarily need that this person I was talking about from North Carolina he didn't have that mm -hmm. he had help and support one speaker I heard said that her club rented a stage for her to practice on so she could better prepare for the big stage or at least the semifinals having a larger group of people to speak to and that's what her club did to su support her yeah because I remember Deb saying that there was like four women that made the top four for, for the for the for the for the international speaking yeah game. I think it was three yeah three three, three for the and that top was the three. that was like the first time in history yes yeah. yeah so that and there were way more men because Toastmasters started for men and they accidentally admitted a woman. Her name was Helen Blanchard, and they thought her name was Homer. What year did Toastmasters start again? It officially started in 1924 in California. Okay. And if you, uh, if anybody's interested in the history, it's at the website, toastmasters.org. And at the website, you can also look up clubs there are several clubs in our area. One of the oldest clubs is Fond du Lac Toastmasters. It started in 1947. It's older than me. So that's how many years? I can't do the math now. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how many areas do you how many areas do you cover? Like with being I areas, just have yeah. I just have five clubs. I have Deer Tales, whatever they're going to be called. I have Fond du Lac. I have Sabre Speakers, which is a new club, and they are dynamite. Okay. They meet during the day, and then Fond du Lac Toastmasters meet in the evening. 
Okay. And then I have Truck Masters, which is in Oshkosh. Is that just, is that? Is That's that, a corporate club. Is it, okay. For Oshkosh Corp. Okay. Yeah. I was like, is that just for truckers? You know, <laughs> I wasn't sure about that. I was in, yeah, they so. build trucks. So, yes. So, and I think I counted four, and I'm like, who am I, who am I forgetting? Uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. No, Water City Speakers is the fifth one. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I've, cov I've covered them. Then what? we have others. We have some, we have Fox Speak that I'm a member of in Menasha, and then there's N.E.W. Appleton, which is really funny. I looked on the website. It says New Appleton. It's supposed to be N.E.W. Northeast Wisconsin, mm -hmm. but they took out the periods. <laughs> yeah, because when I first heard about Toastmasters, I thought maybe it was just people drinking wine and sitting around like chit-chatting or whatever. So, you know. Um, so what is the mission of Toast? What what is like the main mission of Toastmasters? The mission is to provide a supportive environment to help people become better speakers and leaders. And I think they fulfill their mission very well. So what would you say to somebody that wanted to like join Toastmasters, maybe go outside their box? I would say look on the website, visit more than one club because the clubs are different. They do things a little bit differently. We do try to start on time, so it's good to go a little early to the club and introduce yourself. But if you can visit more than one club and then join. Mm -hmm. And one more quick question. How has Toastmasters increased your confidence? It's increased my confidence because I don't, I don't think I would be here if I hadn't been involved in Toastmasters. I think it gave me good preparation for taking any opportunity I can to promote Toastmasters. So I thank you for letting me be here. And thank you for, thank you for joining me today. And, and Oshkosh, if you have a story idea that you want to, that you want to, you can email me at edwardcastern at yahoo.com. Thank you for joining me, Ashkash. See you later.